Good morning, Inman. It's good to be back. It's been over two years since I've been up on stage here, uh, and for most of that time I was living overseas. Did I miss anything? All right, what's going on? We are in the midst of a massive financial reckoning in the real estate tech space, all right? Um, Stock prices of the big publicly listed internet companies are down 60, 70, 80 percent over the past year. That's billions of dollars of shareholder value just kind of gone instantly. Uh, some of the biggest real estate tech companies out there are bleeding money, hemorrhaging huge amounts of cash. Since 2017, Open Doors lost over $1.6 billion. <laughs> If you, if you like that, you're going to love what's coming up next. Uh, Zill <laughs> Before Zillow shut down its iBuying operation last year, it managed to rack up $1.5 billion of losses. And Compass has lost one, over $1.7 billion since 2016. Massive, massive amounts of cash burn these companies are losing. Which reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, Richard Branson. If you want to be a millionaire, start with a billion dollars and launch a new airline. <laughs> so I think what we can do, we can tweak that around a little bit. If you want to be a millionaire, start with a billion dollars and start a real estate tech company. So last time I was up on stage, I talked about sustained unprofitability is this new competitive advantage for these new real estate tech companies, right? They can raise massive amounts of capital, burn it, nobody seems to care. It's a competitive advantage that is incredibly difficult to compete with. But now that is turned from an advantage to a liability. And that's because cash is king, right? Right now, cash is absolutely king. And that's because you can't pay bills in adjusted EBITDA or contribution margin or any other manufactured financial metric. You pay your bills in cash. So let's look, at, let's look at some data, all right? When I think about cash, I think about how much money a company has in the bank and how much they're burning, how much they're spending. If we go back to Q1 2022, we can see just a couple publicly listed companies, the blue bar, how much cash do they have in the bank? And the pink bar, how much are they burning? How much did they burn in that quarter? You can see some companies like eXp made money. They generated cash. Um, others at the other end of the chart, you see Compass, um, they burned a lot, about 150 million bucks in that quarter. So as an exercise, and please keep in mind, this is an exercise, um, you can simply do some division, right? If, if these companies continue to burn money at that rate, how long do they have before they become insolvent? When do they run out of cash? Um, it's an exercise because Q1 is abnormal, right? Cash burn in Q1 is much higher than the rest of the year, so take this with a grain of salt. This is an exercise, back of the envelope. Um, but you can see what happens, right? EXP can last forever. They're making money. Um, these other, this is how many months of cash, right? But then you, you kind of notice the compass problem, right? They're, they're just lower than its peers. 10 doesn't really matter so much. It's just the fact they're lower than its peers. That's because they have relatively small amount of cash in the bank, but their burn rate is super, super high. Then we throw some of the big guys into this equation, Open Door and Zillow, if you're hoping for them to go away. It, you know, keep hoping. They've got over $2.5 billion each of cash in the bank. They're going to be totally fine. They can last this out. It's going to be fine. So we, we're seeing this shift, right? We're seeing this shift from sustained unprofitability to everybody scrambling, trying to get a sustainable business model. And how do you get a sustainable business model? Anyone? Make money. Make money. A little bit different. Profitability. Profitability is the lost art of making more money than you spend. <laughs> now, it's, it's really interesting. In real estate, there's one way to make money. There is one unrivaled source of revenue and profitability that all these big tech companies are going after. That's the agent commission pool, right? That is the money that agents generate from their commissions by helping people buy and sell houses. Now, everybody's talking about doom and gloom in 2022, right? Um, you know, transactions are going down. But the interesting thing is home values have gone up. They've skyrocketed. So that agent commission pool is actually pretty big. 
It's going to be lower than last year, but it's going to be about $20 billion larger than 2019 because of the home values. So this is this, is this, this natural resource underground, like a, a reservoir of natural gas that every, all these companies, everybody's trying to tap into because that's, that's the one way to make money. So how are the big companies doing that? Uh, Zillow, as part of their 2025 plan, um, they're planning to generate an additional $1.5 billion of revenue in their premier agent program. That's effectively doubling premier agent revenue by 2025. That's it. That's, that's the focus there. And a big way they're doing that is by something I call next gen lead gen. All right, so this is an evolution of premier agent. This is an evolution of lead gen. And the way it works, and it's not just Zillow, but Realtor.com has something similar, and there's other companies around the globe that do this as well. They still they generate buyer leads, uh, but then two things happen. First off, they qualify those leads, right? They're picking up the phone, they're calling Mike Del Preti and saying, hey, Mike, uh, I notice you're interested in this house. We can help you out. When are you looking to buy? Are you working with an agent? What's your price range? Right? They're going to qualify them. Second thing is they operate on a commission share. These leads are distributed effectively for free, and only if they transact does the agent pay a percentage of their commission back to the portal, about 30 35%. Now, next gen lead gen is Zillow Flex. All right? And Zillow Flex is becoming more and more important and a bigger part of Zillow's revenue generation ability and their premier agent program. You see it in pink. It is increasing over time as the traditional market-based pricing, pay-per-lead, is decreasing. This is one to watch. This is a big move for a big player. So how else are companies tapping into that agent commission pool? Um, you've got Compass. Compass's plan to generate more revenue and achieve profitability is to pay agents, as a percentage, less money of their commission. This is from their investment deck. They've actually put this together. And it's, that's what it's saying. It's like, here's our plan to make more money and become profitable. We're going to claw back more money from agents. And in their words, that is improving economics with agents. <laughs> and, and they have a demonstrated track record of increasing this 1% a year. So if, if you work for Compass, if you're an agent with Compass, their plan to profitability is to pay you as a percentage less money over time. That's the plan. These are their words. These are not my words. And then you got Open Door. Um, Open Door has got this track record of reducing the buyer agent commissions. They, they pay for the homes they buy and then sell. In Atlanta, it started out at 3%. They've kind of uh, tried 1.5% and, and then settled at about 2.25%. This is a way that this company can save tens and tens of millions of dollars every year by reducing that buyer agent commission. So there's a lot of activity, and there's a lot of new models in this space. This is something I track very closely, all right? And they're getting mainstream. So last time I was up here, I showed this chart, looking at the new brokerage models. And I said, wow, look at this. EXP, Compass, they're growing really fast. And then you got industry incumbent Realogy kind of up top, right? Exponentially larger than the new brokerage models. Watch what happens when we fast forward to today. Boom. That's incredible growth. If I thought it was strong in 2019, 2021 is insane. I mean, exponential growth. And before you send me a, an email or something afterwards, this is EXP just in the United States. All right, this is apples to apples. That's crazy growth. And then we throw Realogy back up there. You know, it's still kind of the same. Um, EXP is actually bigger than them on a transaction volume basis. That's super significant. This is crazy growth, crazy growth. Um, and it highlights the risk that I, I think it's probably the number one risk that everyone in the industry faces right now. And, and again, I'm going to pull up a quote. We're losing so slowly, we think we're winning. <laughs> this is taken out of context. Gary Keller was not talking about my graph. It was something else. But it's still apt. And, and that's, the, that's the issue, right? The industry is moving so fast, you can't just sit still. You, you can't do nothing. And that's the risk. So much stuff is happening with these new models. Um, even if they just gain a little bit of traction, you can't sit still. So back to EXP and Compass, the big growers, right? It's the tech. That's what's powering it. You know, it's the tech, right? Right? Um, actually, it's not. It's agent count. Uh, the growth of those companies is tied directly to the growth in, their, in the number of agents. Their, their success story is a recruiting success story. 
And that's because technology doesn't sell houses, agents do. All right. So those are the new brokerage models. Then we have new business models. All right, we've got I buying, which for the record is a phrase I did not coin.、Uh, that is providing instant sales solutions to customers. And then we've got power buying, which for the record is a phrase I coined last year, and I love it.、Um, that's providing people cash offers and the ability to buy before you sell. These are what I would say are the biggest new business models in the, in the space, gaining traction over time. And they're becoming mainstream. This is a, an actual billboard from Denver, near where I'm from. House hunting doesn't have to suck. Make a cash backed offer on your dream home with Realsure. Realsure is Realogy's play into the power buying space. So, to their credit, they're not standing still.、Um, they're putting up flipping billboards in Denver advertising their power buying product. Then you've got Open Door is running national TV campaigns. Has anybody seen this? Show of hands, claps, anybody? All right.、Um, sell your home the new fashioned way. Open Door. Hopefully, the FTC doesn't have an issue with this one. The iBuyers are spending hundreds of millions of dollars every year advertising their model. If you're a traditional real estate agent, they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars telling consumers directly that you are old fashioned, mainstream. So, as these companies get bigger and, and, and amass more power in the market, what are they doing with that? What's the implication of all of this? Uh, if you're familiar with the video streaming services out there, you know, Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV, they all have exclusives, right? Exclusive content you can only see on their platform in an effort to get consumers to sign up. We have the same thing in real estate. The same thing is happening in real estate.、Uh, Compass has Compass exclusive listings. These are inventory on the private Compass platform that will never get listed on Zillow or Redfin. You literally have to call a Compass agent to get access to these listings. If that doesn't scream 1990s, I don't know what does.、Um, as of last week, that was about 2,700 listings, about 15% of their total listings. And in some of their biggest markets, like San Francisco and New York, that number is getting closer to 40%, 45%. This is not just for movie stars and、um, you know, rock stars, right? This, this is for a lot of their customers. Then you got open door exclusives. In their words, again, these are off market homes you can't find anywhere else. Open door takes these listings, puts them online,、uh, advertises them online for two weeks before they hit the MLS. And the reason open door can do this is because it owns the home. Effectively, open door is transitioning into the nation's largest for sale by owner operation.、Uh, this is, look how, how many exclusive listings are happening over time. This is an exponential hockey stick type curve. Over 550 last month alone, listings were put exclusive. You can only find them on opendoor.com. This program is currently in three markets in Texas.、Uh, almost all of Opendoor's listings in Austin are going exclusive first, and about half of listings in Houston are going exclusive first. And perhaps most importantly, about 40% of their sales in July in Austin were sold exclusively. These were homes that never hit the MLS. This is good for Open Door in a number of ways.、Um, one of which, if we go back, is they don't pay a buyer's agent commission if they sell it exclusively. So, what we're seeing here is these companies gain market power. We're moving from an open ecosystem to a series of walled gardens. I think about、uh, Zillow's mission, right, to turn the lights on, increase transparency. What we have right now are some people with dimmer switches kind of fiddling around, right? Trying to actually turn it down.、Um, and and you've got to remember what's good for the company is not always good for the consumer. So there's a lot happening in this space as these companies gain market share. One more thing I want to talk about. Just one more thing.、Um, I can't help but think about the massive amounts of venture capital pouring into this space. Right? Almost $20 billion last year. And over the past, gosh, five, six years, maybe $50 billion, venture capital firms pouring money into real estate and real estate tech. And this is causing a huge influx of new models new business models in real estate, real estate tech, new brokerage models, new solutions for consumers.、Um, hundreds of them subsidized by venture capital, tons of, tons of it. And it's, it's technology. The title of this is Real Estate Technology. 
And of those, dozens are focused on new ways to buy and sell homes, right? Everything from alternative financing, which is kind of the power buying, i buying stuff, to finding a home, listing a home, selling your home. Tons of new models, billions and billions of dollars. So there's so much new technology out there and so many new business models, there's less need for agents, right? No, I don't know, maybe.、Um, that's not the story they're pitching to investors. They're not going to investors and saying, we're building all this technology and we're just going to keep using agents and that's how everything's going to work out. No, they're going after the agent commission pool. They're trying to get their cut of that pie.、Um, so, so much new technology and new business models, less need for agents. Except there's not. So, if you look at the data, the data doesn't support it. If you look at the evidence for home sellers, you know, over 90%, well, what is this? 80, 90%. 90% are using agents to sell their home. That is at an all time high over the past 40 years. So people are still using agents to sell homes. What about buying homes? What do you think? People using agents to buy homes? I don't know. You got Zillow, you got all the listings. Maybe you have to call a Compass agent now and then.、Um, no, it's actually the vast majority of people are using agents to buy homes as well 87%. That's huge. That's at, that's at this all time high. Agents are still super relevant.、Um, and if you think about you know, where Zillow came on the scene, that was way back there. You think Zillow's turning on the lights, reducing,、uh, reducing the need for agents to get access to inventory. There's actually more consumers using agents now to buy homes than when Zillow came on. It's increased that over time. And the reason is that agents are still absolutely central to the transaction. With all this billions of dollars in investment coming in and all these new models, everything from power buying, i buying,、um, what Zillow's doing, and the big real estate portals, if you go kind of another layer deep, you realize that everybody's still, the agents are still central to the transaction. With all of this tech, all of this change, all of the capital, that's still true. But, but in 2022, the stakes are higher than ever before. There's a lot of change, and that change is happening faster than ever before. There's a lot going on in this space. And that is 2022 WTF. <laughs> Thank you.